Northwest Indiana TV. Uh, your host today is Wendy Burbridge, who's the <laughs> Director of Development for uh, Habitat for Humanity, Northwest Indiana. And with us today, we have Leslie Corona, who is the uh, Volunteer Coordinator. Welcome to your show. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Uh, um, thank you. <laughs> when, I'm always happy to be here. So oh, thank you so much. You guys, we you know how, <laughs> how emotional we get about providing affordable housing to people in times. Yes. And as without saying, these times are definitely um, not just now, but in the future, we foresee affordable housing being even more of a key element in our society um, because people, their, their lives are going to change the financial, yeah. and, um, physically, and who knows what that's going to look like. But uh, yeah. one, if uh, they draw any inference of what's going on, one just would have to assume there are people that are probably living in housing right now that will not be able to afford them. Uh, right. What better situation than to go to the habitat? Well, with that, uh, I will turn it over to you, Wendy, and I'll sit back and enjoy for once. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. <laughs> you have to worry thanks. about questions or <laughs> so. No, we got this. <laughs> Leslie and I have this. Um, so, but I want to thank you for bringing up the point about affordable housing. Um, it, it was definitely an issue even before the uh, COVID-19 um, pande pandemic hit. Uh, affordable housing is just an ongoing nationwide issue. And um, that's, our mission is to bring people together um, to build homes, community and hope and, um, you know, into the future. So as long as there's a need for affordable home ownership, um, we'll be here working at our mission. Um, and that takes help. We don't, we can't do it alone. And uh, we need the community's help in supporting that. And the biggest way is through volunteerism. And so um, I'm excited to have Leslie here today to talk about that. She's our volunteer coordinator. Um, she's been with Habitat for Maybe you talk about that, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Wendy. I've been with Habitat for a little bit over a year now, going on a year and a half, um, and I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with my volunteers. I'm really happy to be such a part of a beautiful mission, um, and especially because we get to meet such amazing people just through our volunteers every single day. And they yeah. are awesome. It's it is so much fun to work with people who get so excited about what we do and creating opportunity for families um, moving forward. It's life changing. It's life changing for the families. It's life changing for us every day. So, um, so what Leslie does is again, Leslie, maybe you want to talk about <laughs> how you go um, about, you know, what your role is with Habitat. Sure. So I pretty much help recruit our volunteers uh, and I also help build the relationship with our volunteers. We always have people who are interested in volunteering, uh, but keeping the volunteers is a big part of it. We always want to make sure that everybody feels welcome, that everybody wants to continue to come back. Um, so when we do send out, like, for example, our weekly emails, we include what we're doing, where we're going to be and, you know, what kind of stuff we'll be, we'll be doing so that people are comfortable doing those things. Some people hate to do drywall. Some people hate to do flooring. So we want everybody who comes and joins, joins us is comfortable with whatever tasks we're doing that week. Um, so yeah, I just help bring in the volunteers and I help maintain the volunteers and try to keep everyone fed and happy. <laughs> That's right. So Leslie makes sure that we have enough water and refreshments for volunteers that they have um, food. So she makes sure to bring lunch out. There's always snacks available. We want to keep our, make sure that our volunteers stay energized. Um, when you're out there working, you get hungry. <laughs> so <You> do. <laughs> Leslie makes sure that we have um, food there for everyone. And she makes sure that they have all, all their needs are met. So if they, uh, need another pair of safety goggles if they have a question about what it, what they're doing, may, you know, 
she makes sure that our construction manager, one of the core volunteers comes over to give them some help. And she's out there all day long with the volunteers on the builds and um, just seeing to their needs. So it's, it's really key to have someone like that. Um, it can be intimidating, especially if you're like a new volunteer, somebody who's never been out on a build. Um, Leslie makes sure that, that everyone feels comfortable, just like she said. So, and, and I think that's really important too, especially hitting the topic of new volunteers. We have our group of core volunteers who are pretty much pros. Uh, they, they take the lead, they're, they're amazing. Um, but we do get new volunteers about every week and there's people that have had no experience with Habitat and there's people that have just you know heard of Habitat. So it's really important to kind of just give them an introduction, let them know about our mission, why we do this, and that they don't need any experience. We, we have volunteers that have never hammered a nail before and we have volunteers who ran a business for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that regardless of what level they're in, they, that they're welcome, that we, we have Mark, a construction manager who is super patient, uh, who is willing to teach everyone. And I think he kind of enjoys when they don't know because he, he likes to teach. You know, He enjoys that aspect as well. So it, it's important that volunteers know that you don't need to bring tools. You don't need to have any knowledge in home building. Uh, we're happy to walk you along through the whole process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Leslie, just a question. So, um, if someone uh, wants to volunteer, but they they know ahead of time that they 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 would probably be better off doing something, um, can you, do you try to organize them that way as well? If you know someone coming on site maybe is is an electrician and maybe not so good at uh, drywalling. Um, you could pigeonhole them into that area because I'm telling you, if you ever saw some of the drywall taping that I've done, you would, <laughs> when drywall came to being done, you would make sure I wasn't on site. <laughs> yeah. So we, we give them the option. Right. We, we do send out the email and we let them know like, Hey, this is what we'll be doing. Um, I actually have really good connection with all my volunteers. I make sure I email them. I speak with them on the phone. I talk to them the day before they volunteer as well, just in case they have any last minute questions. And, and then I do kind of run through what we're going to be doing. Um, if by any chance plans change and all of a sudden we're gonna be drywalling, like you say, and someone's not comfortable, we can always change their uh, volunteer date till the following weekend. Or some, some of them are comfortable enough to tell me, hey, Leslie, I really wanna do you know a wall raise. Can you just keep me in mind for a wall raise? And then when that time comes, then I, I, I reach out to them. Cool. Yeah. And then people come on site, of course, and would love to learn everything. It's just the matter how many times I was taught drywall taping. <laughs> when I come out and volunteer, just make sure there's no drywall taping going. <laughs> so. Well, that's that's why we have Mark. Um, uh, Mark Burroughs is a great construction manager with lots of experience, and he won't let anything get by him. So don't worry. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we're here to we're building houses that are going to stay up <laughs> so and i guarantee you, if he's, I am. <laughs> you ever saw the way i drywall taped and, and mud, <laughs> say yeah we need to get bill on something else real quick <laughs> so, i'm making notes bill do not have <laughs> the drywalling <laughs> yeah, it, it, my um uh, the walls that i drywall taped and mudded pretty much the surface of the moon was a lot <laughs> Yeah. So, well, that, that's, that's okay. So you Your do, heart's in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do have a way of putting people into, you know, scheduling them into tasks that they may be more apt at and um, more comfortable at. And, um, and even though that they don't know a task and, you know, there's some people that just are afraid to learn and, you mm -hmm. know, so cool. Yeah. Most of our volunteers show up very excited. They, they all want to show up with like a hammer in hand that they're, they're ready to go. So even if without any experience, like I said, Mark has projects throughout the entire day. And if we see that they start off on something that they're not really comfortable, we, we're constantly asking them to like, are you comfortable with this? Is this something you want to continue doing? Do you want me to find a different project? Just so, again, we want our volunteers to keep coming back. So we want them to have a pleasant experience throughout the entire day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing that people need to know is the family is present. The partner family is present with all these volunteers. And 
so they get to interact with the family members and, and see who they're hel actually helping out, which I think is cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And that, that I think adds a lot more of an emotional, it gets, becomes very personal because for example, our core volunteers are there from day one and they get to see it completely develop, work with this family, see the excitement grow. And then when we finally have that home dedication, that, that's when, that's when the tears come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were there. <laughs> Believe me, we, yeah, we, we experienced that. That was very emotional to uh, see this uh, mother um, look around and, and see this house and uh, see all the people that are there supporting yeah. the dedication. Yeah, that was, that was a wet eye moment for all of us. <laughs> so that was cool. Very cool. It's powerful. It's powerful because you know, you know, you're, you're changing the, that family's life, mm -hmm. their kids' lives and well into the future until their adulthood. So it's, it is very powerful. And that's what, I think that's what excites the volunteers, right, Leslie? They're, yeah, they know absolutely. that difference that a home will make and it's their home, yeah. you know, and, um, and they, they, they feel that power. So it is, it does drive them. That's cool stuff. Cool stuff. <laughs> so Leslie, you were talking about, you know, tools and all the safety materials and, and um, all their needs are met. So everything's provided with COVID. Can you talk about some of the steps that we've taken to make sure everything's sanitized and um, clean for our volunteers? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, um, we have, of course, masks, we have uh, gloves, different types of gloves as well. We have hand sanitizer, we're constantly disinfecting as well. Um, we have uh, uh, the staff, for example, we, we check our temperatures every morning. Um, and then when it comes to lunches, of course, we ask if there's dietary restrictions, but we go and get packaged lunch that same day. Um, so it's nothing that's been made at home or anything like that, we, we're, we're getting the lunches. Um, and then they're brought to the side. I, I'm the one that takes it. So I pick it up and I take it. Um, so we, we just, we're just maintaining everything as clean as possible, even though it is a construction site and there's gonna be mud and dirt and you know all this other stuff, everything is sanitized. I go in, I set up a table, uh, we set up the chairs. I sanitize the entire area. I have even uh, purchased tablecloths now so that the table is sanitized and I put a tablecloth on top of the, the <laughs> table as well. So I do let all our volunteers know this as well. Um, and we're also maintaining our groups a little bit smaller. Uh, we are trying to stay under a certain number of people per day. Um, we've been very fortunate when we do have a nice number of volunteers at times that reach out and I have about 15, 20 people and we do have to shorten the days and be like, okay, we can only allow a certain limit per day. Um, but we always add them on to the following day or the following weekend as well. And I assume that changes as the uh, outside work is done and you move inside, then you have to be more careful about social distancing and- Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right now it's a little bit easier because we're outdoors. Like, uh, for example, this week we're building uh, the flooring. So everybody will be outdoors. Everybody's kind of just scattered everywhere. Um, so it, it makes it really easy with social distancing. But just like you said, Bill, once we get inside, those numbers will change as well. So it sounds like you guys have a good handle on the safety of the sites and uh, having, um, you know, this uh, CDC guidelines in place and mm -hmm. distancing masks. And, and um, it's interesting because I, I thought I did that, but you have to I'm take on. pictures of every volunteers and everyone that comes on the site and log them. Right. Oh. We, we do. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, we do. So for, for all our volunteers, we, you know, we, we do send out an email as well and we say, hey, you know what, if you are experiencing any symptoms, if something changes, please do not hesitate to let us know. Uh, you know, the safety of our volunteers and our staff is what's most important. So if, you know, numbers change or someone's not feeling well, we understand it, it's COVID has changed our time a little bit. So we're just kind of trying to, you know, mold to, to this new normal. Yeah. And that's something, you know, that, um, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, difficult to do sometimes, but a lot of people forget, you know, with COVID, um, you know, they, they got to realize that habitat's expenses 
have gone up now that you have to take all these precautions. You have to mm -hmm. supply masks. You have to take people's temperatures and, and log them, and, which is labor that you never had spent before. So uh, for those of you out there who are still considering donating, boy, Habitat is one of those uh, non-for-profits that would really appreciate any support that you can get. Uh, Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And even with our, our restore volunteers, uh, right now, you know, we had a lot of people that have been working from home. So we're receiving more donations, which means we need more volunteers to help us disinfect those donations. You know, we, we're going through all the items as well. And then we have we have our restore volunteers as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it definitely makes a difference. So what Leslie is talking about is donations of home goods. So we at the, our restores, we take uh, we resell new and gently used home goods and building supplies um, at the restores. And, and the restores are another avenue for us to fundraise to build more homes. So each our restores are responsible for raising enough funds to fund the materials to build a, a home every year. And so when we receive those items, like Leslie was saying, they have to be disinfected too. And that's more time and, and resources. So all those cleaning products that we were already investing in, now they're including disinfectants and uh, special materials to process the, those donated goods into the restores. Yeah, not only that, we just donated some furniture ourselves and, um, you know, it's, it was kind of interesting because it was back in a day where uh, you just go out and pick up anything, be fortunate to get it. But now you have to be a little bit more cautious. Right. Two levels, make sure it's going to be a safe thing. Um, you know, obviously you can't have a mattress or anything. Uh, but then also just um, uh, as, as constringent it may sound, uh, your driver was extremely conscious of the uh, condition of the furniture. Um, because one thing that we know is that you have a limited space and you can't take on anything necessarily that you can't sell or um, get income for. Right. And, and so that's something people just have to understand. That's, yeah. COVID has just created a completely mm -hmm. different environment for everybody. It has. Yeah. It has. Essentially, they're looking at it, at, at furniture especially, as if I wouldn't put it in my home we're probably not gonna be able to sell it. <laughs> so so they're just being very choosy um, about that for a number of reasons. So um, so Leslie, do you wanna talk, since we're talking about Restore, you wanna talk a little bit about volunteer opportunities in the Restores? Yes, so we have our Griffith location ro uh, located right here, right off of Ridge and Colfax. And we always need volunteers there, whether, um, you know, it's on weekends, we have a lot of great donations and sometimes it's a little bit of heavier items. So we can always use a hand there. We can, um, we always need volunteers to go through the items, disinfect the items, you know. Sometimes I have those amazing volunteers who like to come in and help me decorate the store. That's always mm -hmm. a great help as well. Um, so it, it can be, it ranges. So it can be some heavy labor stuff and it can be simple things from, doing our flower arrangements to, you know, cleaning all the glassware and organizing uh, small things like that. We do have our Maribel Restore as well. Dates for that location kind of vary because we're currently still accepting donations, but we're not open to the public yet. Um, but we do add that on in the email as well when we know what dates the restore will be available. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the store has been closed for a couple months. So we can always use the help there, whether it be with dusting, organizing the new donations, disinfecting the donations as well. Um, and those days are Tuesdays through Saturdays, normally between the hours of 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. But just to make sure people know, the Maryville location is not truly open yet. You accept right. donations there, but um, they would want them to go to Griffith that they have some shopping to do. Right, absolutely. It's not open to the public yet, but we'll gladly take your donations at both locations. So on that, um, I want to point out we have a couple of positions that are open, which is why the Restore in Maryville isn't open yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking for people. Um, 
So we're looking for a store manager and we're also looking for a floor uh, a manager's assistant. And so those positions, if anyone out there is interested in working for Habitat at our restores, um, they can go to our website and wihabitat.org and go over to our menu, which is across the top and hover over about us and you'll see the drop down um, job opportunities. And so those job descriptions are there. Yeah. And these are paid positions. I just want yes. to be clear. Yes. These are, uh, which you don't have any of. A Habitat is one right. of those, is a mean and lean organization that mm -hmm. they want to make sure all the resources that come in, at least a good majority of it goes towards their mission. Uh, so Correct. That's right. You guys That's do an right. awesome job at, I tell you. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you. Um, so speaking about our website, it's also a portal for our volunteers to register. Leslie, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's really easy. You just have to go exactly where Wendy said. It's www.nwihabitat.org uh, and you're just going to click on get involved. It's honestly about under a minute. It asks a couple of questions and it puts you in our system. It allows us to kind of track your hours and it gives me a, a little notice that you're interested in volunteering. And then as soon as I see your information, I would contact you and we would set up a volunteer date. Now, uh, the, the, talking about volunteers, what is it as easy as that? Is there any um, thing else that's done other than person putting information on a website, uh, application or anything of that nature? It's really that easy. <laughs> so you just kind of go through the website, uh, fill out your registration form, and within a day, I am calling and contacting right. and seeing when are you available, how soon are you available, and what you're interested in. Are you interested at a construction site, or are you interested at one of our reef stores, and what you're interested in particular, whether it be, you know, like you said, Bill, doing flooring or drywalling, yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> or, or you know, organizing at one of our resources. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. I mean, and boy, you know, people. It, it's difficult to say, but uh, boy, there are a lot of people still out of work that um, you know, in the hopes of getting employment. So if you're looking for something to do, oh, I, I tell you, there couldn't be a better organization to volunteer for than Habitat. Uh, they, their mission is so blessed and and what they do for people uh and particularly lower income that need housing it, it's it's it, it is well worth your effort to volunteer so and um yeah it's it's better than sitting home and watching soap operas or <laughs> definitely better than the news so oh my gosh <laughs> news at the habitat <laughs> yeah yeah so uh man so this has been very informative um, you know, particularly now because there, there are a lot of people, unfortunately that, and boy, I tell you what, just put a plug in for mental health. Uh, it's better to go do something than to do nothing. And it's better than watching the TV. Oh my gosh. So if you want a mental boost, if you want something to do that you, that will be very, very much appreciated, this is it. This is a awesome organization and, uh, they will, uh, be very caring about you and what you do. Um, I've seen it firsthand and uh, it's an awesome place. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, um, you get you get fresh air, you get to meet new people, you get to support your community and you become very passionate about it. We are core volunteers. I have a group of core volunteers that come out every weekend and it, it's become like a little family now. It, it's a great feeling. Uh, yep. Uh, yep, it is. It definitely is. Um, second. So, um, oh. If anybody should have uh, questions about volunteering or anything about Habitat, um, Leslie uh, and I are always available to field those questions for you. You can um, email us. And my email is D-I-R-D-E-V at nwihabitat.org and leslie is super easy it's volunteer at nwi 
habitat.org. Um, or you can give us a call at 219-923-7265 and just um, uh, follow the prompts and, and you can get to us and we'll answer any questions that you have about volunteering or otherwise. Cool. Man, this is uh, great information. Um, boy, it's, uh, I tell you what, we'll get this out there just as quickly as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I, the uh, Habitat for Humanity in Northwest Indiana gets the Bill and Kelly love sign. They, <laughs> Thank you. Now, that so may much. not mean a whole lot in certain... You know, <laughs> of course it does, Bill. It means everything. So, uh, oh, well, for those who care about it, it gets the Bill and Kelly love sign. <laughs> So, uh, boy, thank you very much for uh, coming on and, and sharing this uh, information. And um, I, I can't urge the people at home enough if they are waiting, um, you know, whatever it is, waiting for a job, what have you. And, and not only that, it, you know, you get something you could put on your resume. Not that Absolutely. that was the reason to do it, but boy, I tell you, in this day and age, if I were an employer and saw that you worked for the uh, or volunteered for the Habitat for Humanity, Mm -hmm. yeah, say check in the right box. I mean, it does. You know, it's it does. Not the way you, for the reason to do it, you should be doing it to contribute to the community and 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 just really support your community. But um, there's that as well. So mm -hmm. it's it's all good. It is. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. And that with that, I guess we'll wrap up the show. Awesome. All right, and uh, everyone, please have a safe rest of the week, and uh, please uh, take caution, be kind to your neighbors, and with that, we'll say goodbye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>